Two regulators, three tunes, three loads at 50 and 100. And so much more coming up. AEAC is made possible by Air Venturi, Hawk Optics, Diana Air Guns, FX Air Guns, Day State, Air Arms, Sports Match Rings UK, H&N Sport, Aztec Optics, and JSB Predator Pellets. And you guys know the best way to thank them. Seven hundred is to bolt on one hundred and fifty. As this, I feel like I could do a one-handed, and I could still. As always, operation manager for hot side. I've done a full tuning guide on this on my eighty ten. Granted, we're talking a twenty-five yard cut. The 75 foot-pound FX Maverick Sniper 25 cal bullpup comes to us from Sweden and is the industry's first dual-regulated giant plenumed PCP. What that means to you is that it's been purpose-built to efficiently and precisely release huge quantities of air, making it excel in the 60 to 100 foot-pound category, or more specifically, in the 25 and 30 calibers 30 to 65 grain window. If you want to shoot 177 and 22 in Big Powerville, I'd recommend its baby brother, the Maverick Compact, although the Compact does do a good job in 25 cal too. I was able to easily get 60 foot-pounds out of it. If one wanted to shoot primarily pellets and light slugs to more than ample velocities, I might consider the Dreamline, Wildcat, or Crown first. They're less complicated to tune, and the Dreamline and Crown offer a bit more tuning control. The Maverick and its whopping 89cc power plenum are all about the precision management of big lead and big power. It's available in 500, 600, and 700 millimeter interchangeable 1 in 24 twist choked barrels. Represented by the 300cc 250 bar compact, the 400cc 232 bar VP, and this one here, the 580cc 250 bar sniper. In stock trim, the Sniper measures 36 inches long and weighs 7 pounds 8 ounces filled with air. Decked out and shoot ready, my rig weighed in at 11 pounds 3 ounces. To include the scope, mounts, DynaFL moderator, and Sabre tactical buttstock and bag rider. The Maverick ships with one 16 round side shot magazine and a female foster fill extension. It comes in black only. And you can pick one up from Ken at Southern Precision Air Weapons for between $1,450 and $1,800, configuration dependent. Now the Maverick's got efficiency game too. I was successful in tuning it to run optimally with the FX25 grain, achieving 145 shots at 44 foot-pounds, with an extreme spread of 11 feet per second and a standard deviation of just 2.18, of which I'll demo for you in this video. I'll also share my 34 grain ProTune results, which generated 98 shots at 64 foot-pounds, boasting an extreme spread of 11 and a standard deviation of 2.89. At full burn and without use of the accessory slug power kit, the Sniper allowed me 60 shots at 75 foot-pounds, pushing a 34 grain to an astonishing 995 foot per second average, with an extreme spread of 11 and a standard deviation of 2.90. I'll show you that one as well, utilizing the Nielsen Specialty Ammo 38.5 grain slug. All of this success came by way of the Maverick's two externally adjustable match precision regulators, its externally adjustable macro power wheel, its externally adjustable micro hammer spring adjuster, and a user selectable single or dual port transfer port. All of this new machinery out of FX working together in one gun is in all regards a masterpiece in air gun technology, giving the operator great precision and bandwidth over what they want to do. And it's all easy and fun to operate, so long as you know what you're doing. The pup also takes advantage of interchangeable barrel calibers, lengths, twist rates, and hammers. A shroud with one half inch UNF threads to affix your favorite moderator, an upper pick rail with 20 MOA built in, sidewall pick rails, a bipod pick rail, a precision wicker bottle gauge, a precision wicker regulator gauge, a mil spec rubber AR grip, side lever cocking, an adjustable butt pad, and a dual stage, match grade, fully adjustable trigger with manual safety. 
So, knowing all that, is the FX Maverick 25 Cal Sniper right for you? I got that question the other day on the forums. Someone new to the sport was asking me if the Maverick would make a good first time air gun. And the answer is yes, so long as you buy from a company that'll properly set up the gun for you. Like SPA. Because once you set it up for your ammo of choosing, it's really pretty set and forget. And if you find yourself needing to compensate for weather, a bar or two on the rearmost regulator, or just the slightest tweak of the external micro hammer spring adjuster, is all you'll need to compensate. It's all about finding those perfect balance points between regulator pressure and hammer spring preload. And honestly, the Maverick's valving and internal porting makes it easy. Intuitive almost. But what this new Maverick is not is fast resetting. You could hear that big breath the 89cc plenum took after the shot. And that's going to be part of the deal. It's just going to take that extra large cavity 3 to 10 seconds to refill itself from shot to shot. Tune dependent. The more of that plenum air that valve swallows to make things happen, the longer it'll take to refill itself and be ready for your next one. For the 44, 64, and 75 foot-pound shot charts I've shared with you here, recharge time for me was anywhere between 3 and 6 seconds. The higher the power setting, the more air that valve gulps, and the longer it takes to refill those big lungs. Yep, those just went through the same hole. Speaking of that, barrel whip, barrel bow, and barrel harmonics are all going to be important factors to consider if you want to be able to shoot the 700mm successfully. And I experienced challenges with all three throughout the making of this video. Or so I thought. We'll come back to the or so I thought. When you receive your FX whatever, it'll always come with O-rings installed and spaced out along the barrel. These O-rings interface with the barrel sleeve, keeping it centered within, throughout the harmonics of the shot cycle, as well as when the operator mistakenly over-tightens the barrel jam nut, inducing barrel bow within the sleeve. Now for years I've been reviewing various FXs, and I've always coached you guys to throw those O-rings in the trash because they made no difference for me in my 50 and 100 yard accuracy testing. But that's because I know how to tune around harmonics and whip, and I don't over tighten my jam nuts. How does one go about tuning around harmonics and whip? It's easy. Aim for 880 with a regular pallet, and 910 with the JSB redesigned variants. And stay away from giant moderators on 7 and 800 millimeter barrels. It's also important to avoid any waste air behind the pallet or slug. You accomplish this by not overworking your gun and tune. Keep reg pressures and your hammer spring tensions on the conservative side of reasonable. Don't believe a lot of what you read on the forums, and tune your shot cycles to be quick, clean, and snappy. Or you could just cheat and install an accessory carbon fiber liner kit from FX, in addition to doing everything right. Yep, you heard me right. I was running an FX carbon fiber liner sleeve with those NSA 38.5s at 100. And I'm doing it again here at 50. But to be clear, going forward in this video, I'm running no accessory sleeve and no O-rings as previously described. So you'll get to see the FX 25 and 34 grain at 50 and 100 freeballing it, as I normally like to do. Now about this accessory sleeve, I really like the concept and the results speak for themselves. The idea is to fill up the space between the barrel and the outer barrel sleeve with a lightweight filler preventing the inner barrel from bowing and whipping with too much jam nut torque, or from any unsavory harmonics, and heavier moderators at the end of the 700 and 800 millimeter, kind of like how the included barrel o-rings are designed to do, although the carbon fiber sleeve does it better, and it does it while keeping excess metal out of the design and keeping overall weight to a bare minimum. So what is this all distilled down to for the user? It means reduced flyers and point of impact change with varying weather conditions and holds, making the rifle more consistent and less vulnerable to outside influence. And they're only like 30 bucks, so it's worth trying, especially with the longer barrels. And to be clear, I did not epoxy this one in place as per the instructions. I just dropped it in and let it rip. So you might want to try both ways, although gluing will increase the overall rigidity because it makes the barrel one with the sleeve. 
Speaking of hold, approach is important, especially with higher power levels and with the longer guns. Heavy downward pressure on the grip, or a loose grip, or an overly tight shoulder will open up your groups. A light downward force on the grip, a firm grip, a light shoulder, and an exaggerated follow through will yield better results. And I was able to confirm this approach again and again throughout my time with the sniper. That's a lot of downrange power for one little hole. And just goes to show you how effective custom tuning your own air gun can be. Now whether you're pushing a 25 grain to 44 foot pounds, a 34 grain to 64 foot pounds, or a 39 grain to 76 foot pounds, as you're about to see here, the OEM shroud on the Maverick Sniper could use a little bit of help. Now if you want to quiet things down a little bit and you've got the 700mm barrel, I probably like the Danya Fell Tatsu best. It did a really good job of significantly bringing down sound output to the ear and it didn't seem to interfere with barrel harmonics or whip at any of the power levels that I tested it at. Now if you want to take sound reduction a step further, you can try the larger Ronin, also by Don FL. But just be mindful, if you're going to run a big moderator out at the end of a 700 millimeter barrel, you may find yourself trying to tune around whip and harmonics, especially at the lower and medium power levels. Now you can always add the accessory carbon fiber sleeve from FX Air Guns to really stiffen things up if this is what you want to run. Now all of these moderators and that sleeve can also be had at Southern Precision Air Weapons. Now we switch gears to pellets and revisit, or so I thought. So I had this weird flyer thing going on throughout my filming of pellets with the Maverick. And I saw it in both the 25 and 34 grain and it was driving me absolutely crazy because none of it made sense to me. I knew I was doing my part and I had total confidence in the Maverick's barrel and in my tunes. And I'd never seen this before in the 11 FX air guns I've been able to review over the last five years. So I started making phone calls. Looking for answers, I reached out to the three most elite FX tuners that I knew of. Besides myself, of course. <laughs> I called Ken Hicks, I called Justin Jacobson, and I called Justin Welch. Ken thought it might be something in my tune causing harmonics issues, or perhaps an oversized moderator for the situation. His advice was to try to up the reg pressure while maintaining the same velocity in order to stabilize the tune and quicken the shot cycle. This is accomplished by bumping the regs five to 10 bar, then going back to the hammer spring adjustment to try to relocate your target velocity. And once there, redialing it in for a tight ES and SD. Interestingly, asking Justin Jacobson the same thing, I got almost the exact same answer. The first place he goes is to get the right sized moderator at the end of that long barrel. Because if you don't get it right, the resulting bad harmonics and whip can really hurt you. He also mentioned the trick of bumping the reg pressure a little bit from where you thought you wanted to be, as this has a tendency to stabilize and quicken the shot cycle, really smoothening out any ugly harmonics. Now I've got a lot of respect for both of those guys and hearing them both offer the same advice let me know that they were sending me down a good path. In JJ's moderator advice I had previously ironed out on my own. And I felt like my tunes were solid. When you've been doing this long enough you can actually hear when you're in the right place. By that I mean you can actually hear the cough of wasted air. This excess air emerging around the pellet or slug as it leaves the bore is what can induce instability. And you can see the way your pellets are traveling through the air and the way in which they're patterning on the target. But I was getting excellent pellet stability out of both the 25 and the 34 grain at both 50 and 100 yards. So I felt like I was still missing something. And then I got to Justin Welch. And the first thing JW says is, have you checked your pellets? And then I said, of course I haven't checked my pellets. I haven't checked my pellets in five years. Why would I check my pellets? And he said, because they haven't been great lately. 
And I said, what do you mean by that? And he said, the head sizes in these latest batches have been all over the place. In the tight chokes and faster twist rates of these new Smooth Twist X Superior liners are really sensitive to proper head size. And I went, huh, I hadn't looked at that yet. Then I called Michael Went, the owner of the Aragon Nation Forum, to borrow his pellet gauge. He mailed it to me, and then I found the problem. Comparing JSB 25 and 34 grain tins from pre-epidemic to the FX 25 and 34 grain tins which I received just prior to the review, which are manufactured by JSB, it became really clear really quick where my six weeks of torment had come from. So until everyone gets back up and running proper, go out and invest in a pellet gauge especially with these new Smooth Twist X Superior liners, because they'll give you the performance, but they're going to require good pellets. And that's the luck of the draw with these unsorted tins. It's kind of like playing Russian roulette. But I will say that the sensitivity of these barrels doesn't feel that bad to me. They actually seem quite tolerant. Now big news out of Sweden is FX's recent partnership with <laughs> Vika Gages Germany. Now if you've been an FX advocate as I have been over the years, this is a very welcome change as typically the guns that I receive for review have been between 5 and 15 bar off on their pressure gauges and this is out of a company that hangs their hat on precision tuning air gun equipment. Now if you're unfamiliar with Vika Germany, this is the world's largest manufacturing company of measuring devices like this gauge you see here. They produce commercially over 50 million gauges every 12 months and they've got headquarters and manufacturing facilities in every major country around the world. So this is a very good thing to see. Now whether you're refilling the 580 cc 250 bar carbon fiber bottle that comes on the Sniper Maverick or the 400 cc 230 bar alloy bottle that comes on the VP Maverick or the little 300 cc carbon fiber bottle you see over there that comes on the Maverick compact filling goes the same. Remove the little plastic cover and secure your fill equipment. On this bottle here we'll slowly fill to no more than 250 bar. When you're done, bleed your air between the fill source and the gun. Remove the Foster Quick Connect and replace your dust cover. That's all there is to it. The FX Maverick Sniper has been so optimized for precision flow that it pushes 35 to 50 grain lead to 65 to 100 foot pounds with ease, meaning that it's clearly been designed around the weight ranges of the 25 and 30 caliber. To invest in a Maverick Sniper is to understand this, and to understand that the VP and the Compact might be a better choice for you if you're thinking 22 cal. Case in point, this machine is at idle making 44 foot-pounds, and with the larger Donny FL Sumo, the tune worked. Helping me get there was the accessory Sekmet digital pressure gauge. It's so feature-rich that I'm pretty sure it was designed to be run up front on the bottle, but I didn't care about any of that stuff. I only wanted to know exactly where my second reg was at. And for that, this thing is awesome. 
What it does extremely well is precision, brightness, and battery life. What I didn't care for was its overcomplicated menu navigation, its 15 second max screen timeout, its occasional screen blackout, and Sekhmet's poor customer support. So am I recommending you buy one? Absolutely. Every tuner needs one of these things. Just recognize it for what it is and what it isn't. And make sure you buy it from somebody you like and trust because they're going to be your primary support network. They're available at SPA for about 110 bucks. And all the rant aside, I truly love mine and hope it lasts forever. Something else I genuinely appreciated on this build was the Saber Tactical Bag Rider and Buttstock. In that order, because the Bag Rider will work with the OEM Buttstock. And I felt like it was more of a critical component to my success. Its contribution of being able to make micro adjustments up and down the bag was awesome. And I found myself constantly taking advantage of this. I'm even of the belief that it contributes to accuracy. So if bipod accuracy is important to you, it's worth the $65 investment. The $250 adjustable buttstock I believe is going to be more for the freehand hunter. It is significantly more comfortable than the stalker and it clings to the shoulder much, much better. On the bench, I valued it for its soft rubber contact points. They enabled me to include my shoulder in the chute without worry of any kind of goofy deflection, which believe me, with a long high powered air rifle can be a real problem. The Saber buttstock kind of mitigated that, making it worth its weight in gold. To know the trigger in the FX Wildcat is to know the trigger in the Maverick. They're the same. And despite them both being linkage triggers, they're really quite good and you wouldn't be able to tell the difference otherwise. They're as good as anything in the price point and better than a lot that isn't. Now, referring to the owner's manual, I was able to dial its brake weight down to about 10 ounces, which felt pretty sketchy. A pound felt pretty good and a pound and a half felt even better. But for the making of this video, I returned it to its out of the box brake weight, which was about two pounds. Now to find the manual safety, take your thumb and run it down the power wheel. You can flip that safety right off. Now the first stage take up is clean and light. And as you can see, it's very resettable and it comes up against a good solid stop. With about two more pounds of pressure, it cleanly lets off. One pound, 13.6 ounces. If you want to learn how to tune your Maverick, hit me up on my second YouTube channel, AEAC Vlog. I've got a two plus hour tuning guide there for you, as well as setup and tuning guides on several other air guns. All right, you've got a regulator here. You've got a regulator here, all right? This gauge can only see to this regulator. So this gauge is reading this regulator, which is good and which is fine because this is the regulator that's actually doing the work for this valve. Okay, so when I tune, I'm looking, when I tune, I'm looking at this regulator. I'm looking at them both, but this is the one that I can actually see. Okay, I'm going to take you through how to do this in a little bit. But you also need to be able to see what's going on with this regulator's pressure. All right. This gauge over here, that's not what this shows. What this gauge shows is how much air is in this bottle. Okay. So in order for this gauge to see what's going on with this rag, this rag needs to be opened up all of the way or set to its maximum. So that, so that this is kind of just like an open tube and now this gauge here can read what's going on up here. I've also publicized an FX Maverick dual regulator step-by-step -step adjustment sequence over on the Airgun Nation forum, as well as some important guidelines for you to be familiar with before you begin tuning your Maverick. I've included a video there on how to navigate the Sekhmet gauge as well. And if you've made it this far along, you deserve to know. We're having ourselves a $3,700.29 valued giveaway, as indicated by the RDW designation next to this video's title, which stands for Review, Discuss, Win. And participating is as easy as picking a number and entering it over at the Airgun Nation forum. 
you'll see the event sticky there at the conclusion of this video. And it's a simple lottery based giveaway for those that are subscribed to AEAC and whom are members of the Airgun Nation Forum and who live in the United States. It's not that we don't love you if you don't, it's that the event's being put on by Southern Precision Air Weapons, a Florida based company, trying to do something in kind spirit to give back to their customers here. Speaking of kind spirit, if you're in the market for good, cheap, reactive steel targets, Amazon Giant 9 Outdoors has asked to be a part of AEAC and what you air gunners are doing. The coupon code below will get you 20% off their targets, which are already like only 15 to 20 bucks shipped on Amazon Prime. And I blasted them at 50 yards and 76 foot pounds with the NSA 38.5 grain slug. And they took it like a champ. <laughs> Sorry guys, the grass was just too long to stick him in the dirt. Lastly, for optics, I'm running the Element Titan 5 to 25 by 56 first focal plane scope. A 34 mm tube for extra turret adjustment bandwidth, stainless steel internals, ED glass, and an EHR 2D MOA reticle make it a really nice scope to use. And it comes with a lifetime warranty and is financially backed by FX Air Guns. And you can pick one up at SPA for about 800 bones. Yep, that was the 25 grain tuned to the Forbidden 910. <laughs> Not bad. Well, that is all for this one, guys. And special thanks to Southern Precision Air Weapons, Element Optics, Sports Match Rings UK, Donnie FL, Sabre Tactical, Sekmet Gauges, Nine Outdoors, and FX Air Guns USA for getting all of this and more into my hands to review for you guys know the best way to thank them for that one. Now from here y'all want to head on over to the Airgun Nation forum so that you can participate in the discussion thread and the giveaway on an FX Maverick of your choosing. I'll leave you links on how to get there in the description down below. So with that, I'm Steve Shally. Thank you guys so much for watching and good luck everyone.